Leicester, yes. Did you have a good one? Yeah. Nice, restful one. Good. Yeah. Didn't do very much at all, which was lovely. But you'd had weekends of celebrating. Yes, it was nice to and not celebrating have to and do celebrating anything. Yeah. First birthdays. Absolutely. So. so it was nice not to do much. Had lunch with my mum, which was delicious. Oh, it was nice to have somebody else to cook for oh, me. Did your mum cook for yeah. you? Lovely. That'd be nice. Good job, Kate. Well done. Perfect. This is all very good. Yes. Um, and so we're back. I hope you didn't miss us too much yesterday. We will make it up to you, I promise, because we will do a show on Thursday, which we don't normally do. No. Nice change. But we thought we'd just, rather than try and... God, I haven't done my hair, Jane. Just realised. I haven't done my hair. Never mind. Okay. Um, looks fabulous. Instead of... Um, well, yeah, because I wasn't really here. I was over at Creighton Craft and this, that and the other. So yeah, because you've had a busy weekend. It's all been go, 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 go. go. Um, but now we're back. So we will do shows for you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, today. Today, we have got bolt ends. We've got Jane's fabulous new table runner. I love this. It's very springy. It is. It's very fresh, isn't it? And we Pretty. are... What's that big yellow yeah, thing? it's like sunshine outside. Amazing. It's very like sunshine. Ooh. Not to get too excited, but no. it might be. Yeah. Um, and so this is, for me, this is the epitome of spring. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's a nice pattern because it's the sort of pattern you can adapt as well. So, you know, if you wanted to make it longer, to make it as a bed runner, I don't know, change your colours to match your bedroom. It's a really mm -hmm. nice block to do. So. Perfect. You could do it in planes, you can do it in patterns, yeah. you can do it in all your favourite fabrics. Now, here's the thing. Last week, Jane, you did the most incredible cave quilt. Yes. And we did the kits with the books. Yeah. They sold out. We have cut those kits. Yeah. And... Um, with what we have left of the ends of those bolts from the kits, we've bolt ended them because we thought it might give you a chance to buy fabric that matches the front to do the back. Yes, which is always lovely. On a little discount there for you, actually quite a big discount for you, um, so that, you know, it's affordable. Yeah. And that's what we've done for you today. So we're going to have a look at those. Should we have a quick hello to everybody Let's and see who is here? Who isn't here? Who should be here? I'm Who isn't here? Everybody doesn't know what day it is. I forget, don't we? We think it's Monday. We're not really sure. No, like holidays, they really throw you. But we are. We are here. We're Who here. Have we got? We've got Joe. We've got Sophie. We've got Jimmy. We've got Sue um, and Claire. She hope everyone had a lovely um, Easter. Sophie says hi. Your mum says good morning. Here, your lunch was a success. There we go. Uh, Jane's here. Joe's here. Pat's here. Um, and Brenda's here. And Gabrielle's here. And Chris has just joined us as well. So, yeah, people are starting to realise, morning, Kim. Um, that, we're that it's a normal day. Yes, that we're back to it normal. It is a normal day. If you've got children or you're looking after grandchildren, you probably don't know what day it is either. Not a clue. <laughs> nope. I seem to have gained extra children today. It's nice. Well, they can hear, can't they? As nature intended. It's lovely. Off they go. Going on a bear hunt. Go out. Yeah, I don't know if they're just hunting Emily. Yeah, I'm not be. sure. <laughs> Which then just sounds a bit Lord of the Rings-esque. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They'll be fine. Um, and if it's not fine, I'm sure someone will shout. Yes, they will. Loudly and quietly. We've all had kids today. Um, this big pile here, Jane. Lovely bolting. Should we actually these as well? I'm not sure those have been loaded yet, but they will be available. They will be loaded throughout the show. Got a big wodge. Because I also went through the tilda as well, the last of the tilda. Yeah. Oh, shouts looking a bit bare, aren't they? Yeah, we need some orders. We do need some more. Some more fabric. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right, let's have a look then. Shall we go over the head? Over the head. Uh, oh, morning, Vivian. Uh, let me see if I can switch this out, Jane. Who knows? Can I? Do our best. There we go. Beautiful. Yay. Right. Um, if I move these from here to here. Curly baskets. Jane, if they made it exactly the same, last week's quilt, if they made last week's quilt exactly the same size that you made it, how yeah. much do they need? They would need a metre and a half. Okay. If they made it, and used every scrap of fabric in that kit? Probably about three, three and a half. Okay, good. Yeah. That's the correct answer because <laughs> I've done everything from sort of metre and a half up to four metres. Fabulous. This is two, 2.7. 
imagine that on the back of your quilt. It's Gorgeous. rather lush, isn't it? It's lovely because you can also use it one. to inspire your quilting pattern. Oh, yes. There's, there's, um, a lot, there's a several people out there that will use their backing fabric to do the quilting it's following genius. the pattern. It's genius. It is. It's really Absolute clever because it gives you a nice curvy Perfect. shapes to follow. Two metres ninety. Nice. Of the step flower. In That's contrast. such a versatile fabric, this one. Well, you know what? Whatever you don't use on the back of your quilt. Borders and all sorts, yeah. back linings, lovely. Going to right now. Yeah. Just, it just would be rude not to, quite frankly. Um, and this, again, same with the next few. In fact, it was kind of a quilt of fabrics that blend beautifully, wasn't it? Yes. This is your square dance in multi. That is such a versatile fabric. So many colours in there that you can this pull is from. Yeah. It's like, do you remember the paint pots that yes. you did? Nice. It's that, but square. Yeah. Lovely. Basically. Um, and then this is your square dance in pastel. Two and a half metres of this one. There was only two metres of that one. Two and a half metres of this one. I love it in the pastel. It's beautiful. And yeah. that would make a child's quilt play mat. It's just so pretty. Do you know what, actually? A metre of the fleece that we've got. Oh, yeah. That on the back. Fleece on the front. Or the other way around. Yeah. Reversible. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> all, all together, together now. now beautiful oh jane we're in sync today aren't we checkmate pastel this is a big one got just over four meters of this four meters ten and then i thought do i cut it down and do two at two meters yeah and then i thought well no because actually you might want to get a big picnic blanket out of this yes yeah because this is going to look fabulous as a picnic blanket Wouldn't or it? um even just a table cloth Yes. So it's not a difficult word. No. It was just <laughs> there. Couldn't quite reach it. Um, so I left that one. Yes. I did leave that one. Um, Koi Poloi. I love this one. I have only got, this is the very last of it. I've got 2.4 metres of this. I've made bean bags and all sorts out of this. Um, swimming bags, all sorts. It's been such a versatile yeah. fabric. It's good fun for swim bags, isn't it? With your yeah. drawstring bag, it's yeah, ideal. Yeah, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, now, four metres of the coral purple. That's going to make a very impactful backing, isn't it? Isn't it? But it's the sort of fabric that you'd want in your stash anyway, because it'll go It's going to be such like a useful that. one. Yeah. Now, you might not notice this when you first look at it, but there's actually a deeper purple, just high, deeper highlighting, yes. you know, giving shading and... 3D yes, depth it's got to texture this. to it, hasn't it? Yeah. That's the word. Thank you, Jane. Uh, now, pastels in sky, petals in sky, wasn't actually in the quilt, but I only had 2.45 meters left of it. I love that one. It's such a bright colour way. It's lots of well, summer fun. If you wanted to do Jane's quilt today in this colour way, it's the, it's the brighter version of that, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, now, oh, I can't remember how, how much I had of this. I didn't actually write it down, which isn't very helpful. Um, Paisley flower. Nice. There's a big old chunk of that, which, imagine this at the back of your quilt. It's lovely. Again, it would be great to use as inspiration for your quilting because it's got a... But just to have that. Yeah. It's got this unadulterated sort of rope effect on it as well, which is just beautiful. Climbing up the back of your quilt. Well, it's just lovely. You'd, you'd be able to Gorgeous. alternate front and back, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, it would have helped if I'd actually written down how much of that I had, but no. Um, now, Tilda. Last of the Tilda. Beautiful fabrics. Yep. Uh, two metres ten of the teardrop in pink. This is just going to be, get this for your stash. I know, I know, I know. I know. You don't have to use it for anything. <laughs> no, just to stroke. Three metres twenty of this one, which is so make beautiful. a beautiful back in as well. I know. Or dressmaking. Yeah. Dressmaking. Dress and again, that. that's why lovely. I didn't cut that down any smaller because I thought three metres twenty is a really useful dressmaking size. Yeah. One metre ninety five of the autumn bouquet in teal. Pretty. Gorgeous. Now, what about? See, this is, this is the teal colourways, aren't they? Yes. Teardrop in teal. I've got one metre 95 in that. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. 
This is the last of the LED in mustard, two metres and 85 what have beautiful you? fabric this is. I love this. There's so much you can put with it. That lovely tealy colour or this lovely or the blue. pink or the blue or yeah. the red. Very, very versatile. Now maybe you want one to go with, in which case. It's such a classic Tilda, that fabric, isn't Sue it? Sue Mustard. Yeah. Mrs. Really mustard, is. Mrs. Mustard in the sitting room with the candlestick. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, one metre and five centimetres. Look at that five centimetres here. Yeah, five. Probably means it's, it's closer important. to ten. Yeah. Might be a um, bit wobbly on the edge, isn't it? We always take it from the shortest measurement. Yeah. Now. Oh, that's clever. Blues and Tilda. Yes. Really. Oh uh, yeah, that. you can't see because the camera angle is not on it. Jane is just shaking her head in despair <laughs> because it's really hard to match Tilda Blues. It just is, yeah. Just is, just is what it is. Um, but we've got some of her solids. Yes. And this is the last of the Tilda Lupine, one of my favourites. Um, one meter eighty of that. But you can just see how it is the blue. It is the blue. It's blue on there, isn't it? It is the blue. It might not be this blue. That's LED in blue. Yeah. Which is gorgeous. Lovely. It's a different blue, however, to duck nest blue. It's a bit brighter, isn't it, duck nest blue? But the red's the same, isn't it? Yeah, Tell yeah, yeah. The is difficult to match. Um, this just makes me think of Dave. Yeah. Dave's going to be a big Aylesbury, just like this. Yes, he's, getting, he's going white, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He's, he's still he's got little stubby wings, but he's going white. They have grown. They have grown, they have grown. yes. But they have um, grown. He's now a lovely lemon colour. Yeah. He's not quite white, but he's absolutely not that yellow. But he's now a very light lemon. It's very beautiful. Um, and then, morning, Joy, morning, Carol. Um, right, how about this one then? This is classic as well. Isn't it? I love this. And on the backing, again, you've got almost like a stripe on mm. there that you could follow. I've made monkeys out of this. Oh, yeah. yeah, Tilda monkeys out of this. Yeah. It's lovely, really lovely. Two metres 30. Get it for your putback. Absolutely. And then this is a big chunk. Wow. I can always cut it down, but I'll give you first stab at that with three metres 80 of that. That is just, yeah, quilt backing. Bag lining, cushions, dressmaking. dressmaking. That's why, and that's why I'm really torn to cut these down into tiddly tiddly bits. Yeah. Because you've had your chance at tiddly tiddly bit. We have. And this is all we've got really left. Oh, Jane. Are you going to be able to pick that up there? <laughs> I don't know. This might not be pretty. Don't look. It's fine. There we go. It's all good. Lovely. We've done it. We have done it. There we go. I can even move that into there. So, Jane, what have you got in your kit today? I'm it's, a nice go little, it's a nice little kit, here. actually. Good ho. It's not too, it's not too over-facing. You've got a long quarter of the pomegranate. This is the original kit. This is the one with the sample behind. And then we've got some ivory, half a metre of ivory. These are our solids. And then this beautiful petal... It's blue, isn't it? It's called blue, but it's more of a lavendery blue belly blue. It's quite Which soft. is still a blue. Yes. But it's just it's a very soft one. Whereas the sky was the brighter blue that we've just seen. Yeah, almost turquoisey. This is like a softer blue. And then I chose picked up this pink here, so that's bright pink. It's a fat quarter of that one. And then the green, that's a bit of our cottage cloth. From um, Renny Nelliman. Nice. It's got a bit of texture to it, just looks quite nice. Yes. And then we've got a bit of sunshine because. Everywhere, the, James. The There's yellow in everywhere. there, it just pulled that, that sunshiny yellow out of there. I am going to very, very quickly show you it behind, and you can just see that yellow. Yeah. Just it's so happy. It is, it's a nice, bright, sunshiny yellow. It is a nice colour, it's lovely. Because we are hurts, now really. officially. In spring. Yeah. Yeah. I know this because of the daylight saving going forwards. Excellent. Yeah. Having sworn I would never do the seven o'clock <laughs> show when the clothes go, uh, clocks go forward on Crankcraft. And then you did it again. And completely forgot and said, yes, I'll do that. I don't mind being in the studios by six o'clock in the morning, which is actually five o'clock in the morning. Mm. Crazy. 
Yeah. So we've got a, a, a slightly different colourway with the petals contrast, which is just beautiful. This is going to be a stunner as well. I've put isn't that it? with white. Keith needs to go with white. Sometimes he does, doesn't yeah. he? And then yeah, yeah. this is the um, long quarter of black. The long quarter is designed to be your binding. Okay. I mean, you can mix it around if you want to, but I just thought it would be nice bound in black this, this particular colourway. Then we've got a bit of cyan, flat quarter of cyan, which just pulls out this blue here. And then we've got some linen texture from Makawa. Celery, I think it's called. Yes. We know it as G2. <laughs> Otherwise known as celery. Yeah. And then amethyst, because it just pulls in this purple here. So I'm going to demonstrate how to make the block. And I'll talk about how the runner goes together. But I'm just going to do the block today. And we're going to do it in this colourway. Because you can see what it looks like with the other kits. Because it's behind me. And it's behind you. Now, these kits are <coughs> up and loaded. Gemma is busily loading those bolt ends as we speak. Because Julian was saying, when are these going to be on the website? They should be getting there. They should be there. Getting there, getting there as we speak. So do keep checking in on those if you want any of those bolt ends. And again, we always put a discount on them. Um, this way off when they come up like that so yeah do make the most of them so the main part of the block is made up of units which are very simple you've got your main petal part here and what I'm calling the leaf unit um, starts off with a square and two small squares and the larger square is the centre. Now I did on mine, I chose to have one yellow and two pink, but there's enough in your fat quarter to change that round if you wanted to, or possibly even get all three the same colour and have one in your stash or make your runner bigger, whatever you'd like to do. So you have a big square and then you have your two smaller squares in what will be your leaf and then your petal part. On your petal part, you're going to have a small square of your main square and then a small square of your background. And you're going to mark a diagonal line from corner to corner across each of these little squares. The least square has two of the background squares. And we're going to sew on the line. Now, what you could do if you were really thinking about it is just so just to the side of that marked line just so that when your um, seam is pressed back it sits a little bit neater mm. but don't worry if you if you can't think of that just we're sewing on the line you can chain piece these it's quite easy to chain piece and get them all going one way and then go back, back and do the other side Jane might need to just move that, that sewing machine just ever so slightly that way. Is there any fine stand in here? Yeah, that's better, isn't it? And so you would do all of your squares with the one colour way and then you can turn it around. You can cut your thread or you can just turn it around and then you can go down the other side. Now what you're doing is you're basically sewing across the corner because ultimately you're going to trim that square off and then you're going to um, iron it back again to reform the square. Jane I have a message from Gemma and Gemma says Shopify which is the back end of our website is being ridiculous this morning. Oh it naughty. clearly thinks it is also on a bank holiday. Um, and um, it's taking her a little while to load these bolt ends, but loading them she is. So please just bear with, they are going up. And um, yeah, That's just good. bear with, they will, they will be there. Just keep, keep checking back. Now, for each block, you need eight of these petal shapes with your color on one side and your background color on the other. Now what I did was I pressed four of them with the seam going in mm. and then four of them with the seam going out and okay. I'll explain the reasoning for that it's all to do with um, 
seam nestling and all of that to get the points together nicely. We need a bit of seam nesting. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So you can see on that one, those ones go in and this one, these ones go outwards. And I'll just do the, the um, corners. And again, we're just sewing across the diagonal. So we're basically sewing across the corner. Right. pin these in place if you feel you know if you're not confident as you take it to the sewing machine but they are small pieces so they tend not to move and of course I always prep all my fabric with best press or flatter whichever I'm using yeah you are very good like that actually I do I think it's just a habit that I've got into that I do it with all my fabric before I even start cutting it do you think it helps a lot? I do, particularly when you're doing um, biased seams, yeah. things like that. It tends to... And it also gives the fabric a little bit of a grip. So when you've got small pieces that you're putting on to them piece, they tend not to move. But, yeah, if, you, if, it, if it makes you feel better, pin them. Because there's no rule. Whatever makes you feel happier doing what you're doing. So they're all done in the similar fashion, opposite corners, and press them. So, And then we're going to place, I'm just going to turn them around so that they go with the um, coloured fabric against each other on that triangle. And because we've pressed one one way and one the other way, when we come to line these up, these seams here will nestle. Nice. Which will give you a nice sharp point, which we like, don't we? We like it when it all meets up nicely and neatly. Is this, I mean, it, what level is this? Because as um, soon as we start, I know that people get the fear as soon yeah, as you no, mention I think, points. Um, I think it's a nice, confident beginner person could do this, you know? And I, I don't, because we're always starting with squares, I don't think it's a problem for anybody for this being and because it's a nice size as well it's a lovely size so you, you could know, quilt this yourself easily as a, well it's definitely you? a nice weekend make oh nice i just haven't moved my seam allowance over so i'm just going to unpick that bit because of course i had my needle in the middle in the middle doing, yeah. sewing on the lines <laughs> and i forgot <laughs> to change it over yeah but how many times do we do that the only oh, machine that i don't it? do that on is my little industrial because you can't move the needle no, and it it's easy to in one position. It's easy to see, isn't it? Though? Yeah. But we do get into the habit, don't we? Well, I do, of moving my needle over to my quarter inch mark. Because it's there and it's easy to use. Yeah, no, for And it sure. gives you a nice, consistent seam. But you do have to remember. <laughs> okay. So that, you're going to put all of your petals units then into two into pairs so you've got all of them you'll have four pairs ultimately i'm just going to press the seam to one side it doesn't matter which side you press it to but you can see because those seams are nestled you get a beautiful nice sharp point there. it's those little tricks of the trade isn't it yeah they really help so you'll have oops, sorry my pen around <coughs> you'll have four sets pairs on these ones so you make four pairs and you're going to sew two of your pairs to the side each side of your what is your center square nice with the colored side against your square mm. and that's just a case of lining them up and pinning them if you wish and sewing them quarter of an inch seam either side I like makes like this. Something that can be done in a weekend. Just perfect. Sometimes you just need something quick, don't you? Yeah. Just and just to feel like you've achieved something. Yeah. I think we've all got projects that, you know, we take out occasionally, do a little bit of, and then put it away again. 
that we know that are going to be, you know, over several years. So sometimes you just need a little quick make that you can just take out and get it done. Bit get of satisfaction. It, yeah, and put yeah. it on your table and use it. What? Actually use it, Actually use Okay, it. so if we're going to actually use this, shock horror, um, can we talk about what we are using for wadding then? Yeah, I mean, you might want to put your thermal... Is thermal lamp that we have? We've got thermal lamp. We also have um, Insulbrite. Insulbrite. Yeah. You could certainly use those. Um, okay. Because they'll give that extra protection. But if you use a nice cotton wadding as well, that's also... That do the job. Keeps it, you know, it not not insulated, but will will keep things protected. So I have a question then for yeah. everybody here, because we were talking about whether or not people still use mats. Do you still use a mat, Jane, for your on your um, on your kitchen table? Yes, I do tend to. Um, depends really what we're. But I do like to have a mat, particularly if I've got serving dishes and things with vegetables in, and just put a yeah. mat on with it underneath, just to protect it just a little bit. You see, I'm I make sure that the kids always have a mat under their plates. Yes, and um, so I. Yeah, it's good for children as well because it prevents the it prevents. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing because behind you has bobbed up a Reuben. Um, <laughs> Who went to the beach for the first time this weekend. Did he have a fabulous time? He had a fabulous time. Of course he did. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, mats also stop plates moving, slipping around, don't they? So yeah. for children, that's quite nice to have. Yeah. And also because my children are disgusting um, when they eat. Bless them. They don't mean to be, but just yeah. well, stuff children, yeah, falls, falls everywhere. Falls off the plate. Yeah, it falls yeah. all over the place. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things. It's just easier to have something to gather the detritus. But yeah, I would be very interested to know if you do. And if so, what shape placed mat do you use? Yeah. It's nice to have a round one, isn't it? But square mm. oblong ones are nice too, because then you can put, it looks nice on your table because you can put your cutlery on it as well. A nice mix, yeah. So we're going to make the top and bottom row now. So with your pair and the, the coloured triangles facing you, if you like, you're going to put your what we're calling our leaf units either side so they face outwards so the top background triangles nestle together now you will get one that nestles depends you can think about this and you could you could do the same as we did with the petal blocks and do so many one way and so many the other way right but I haven't. I pressed all of mine. <laughs> but not outwards. me. No, I pressed no. all of mine outwards and then afterwards thought, oh, I could have, not, could have done it the other way as well. Don't you find that though, especially when you're when you're creating any kind of pattern, there's always the afterwards of, mm, yeah. would it have been easier yeah. like that? But all I do when, they, when the seams go the same way is I line them up edge to edge, feel the seam with my fingers underneath and then I'll just put the pin in, lining it up along that seam line. Okay. And that just gives me that confidence that they're going to be lined up and they'll match nicely. I love the shapes that you can get. I very first came across this trying to make a snow bee coat. And it's that sort of thing, isn't it, of knocking the corners off a square yes, and seeing what happens. But the way that you've done it, you've created some really lovely secondary shapes. Yeah. Very beautiful. So what we've done with this, because we've pressed, you know, what I like to press towards the seam generally that's got the least amount of resistance. So to the centre square, I've press, pressed it inwards because you've got all of these seams here otherwise and it's gonna, it, it won't want to sit that way really. Sometimes your fabric tells you which way it wants to go. So those seams are pressed inwards. So on this top and bottom row, I've pressed the seams towards the leaf unit. It doesn't really matter because there's the same amount of seams on both sides, but what will happen is when I come to add this here and here, I've got that nestling of that seam on this side against the square. 
which again is going to give me a nice crisp meeting point. And yeah, I'll probably put a pin in, a couple of pins in, just to hold it in place as I sew it. Yeah, and if you want to, you can also pop a pin in along the background little triangles again just to make sure that they are in the correct places and they're going to meet up which of course they will because you've used a nice consistent seam and you've done your cutting nice and accurately so it'll all line up beautifully all of that chain it's all going to work but it's setting yourself up for success isn't it and that's yeah. how we do it it's all you know, if you keep your consistency and you, and you take your time with your cutting to make sure that your cutting is nice and accurate, you're really not going to have any problem with it coming together. It's that thing that of prior and proper, uh, prior and proper, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Exactly. Easy and I'm you glad you said say. that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> there is another version that we cannot say on air. So we've got the one side done there. And again, I would press the seam towards that centre square just because okay. it'll sit nicer. Right. Less resistance of seams and it will sit. So you center. press to the side of least resistance? Yeah, generally. Okay. That makes sense. Works best. Yeah. And it does help it to sit nice and flat. And then we'll put the other one on, on the other side. And it really does come together quickly. The blocks, um, the cutting of the, of the units is not difficult. They're all pretty much the same size. The little squares are the same size. The petal and the leaf squares are the same size. So there's no sort of having to make sure you've got the right piece with the right bit because they're all, they all work nicely together. Yeah, they play well. Yeah, they do. Good. And we like that. Yes. We're talking of playing well, I haven't heard too many screams so far. No. So this seems is, to be playing nicely. This this is hopeful, Jane. Although you do get that sort of like, mm, it's a bit quiet, don't you? When yes. when you've got children, yes. it's like mm, they've gone very quiet. What they go what are they up to? What are they doing? Yeah, you feel the fear. But they can have real sort of any blighting type of benches here, can't they? Outside in the yeah in the fields and in the back garden because it's a nice garden. Joy's here, Kirsty's here. It's such a lovely day, boo to work. Yes, it's yeah. days like this when you think, hmm, why can't the bank holiday last a bit longer? Um, Sue would like to know if Dave still follows Mabel. Yes, even though he is a big duck now. Mabel is still his favourite, and to the extent that he pr he's preened her so much that the top half of her is now waterproof. <laughs> Bless her. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we have a waterproof dog because of how much he preens her. Jane, have so you just done something your, fabulous? Your block. On? Now, I just want to talk about the quilting a little bit because somebody had seen um, how we how I'd quilted it, and um, had said, "Is it with rulers?" And I'm uh, like, "Carrie, yes, you're very yeah. impressed with your, with your quilting, Jane." Um, it's not with <coughs> rulers. Well, okay. it is, but it's not. Um, it's just an ordinary ruler, and I don't obviously quilt with this because it's not deep enough for quilting with. But I marked my petal shapes by first of all um, lining up the seams here to cut, to do it in half, and then into quarters. And then I did a diagonal. Now I do mark my quilt tops with a fabric marker. Obviously, just test it first on a piece of fab scrap fabric to make sure it doesn't leave a ghost mark, because it can leave a ghost mark. But if you're going to sew on the line and you're quite accurate, then you'll be fine. Um, and then I freehand drew petal shapes. So I went from the centre point there taking my petal shape into that little triangle here. Now, if you feel that you can't freehand, but you could make yourself a petal shape with some template plastic, do that. Do that. Or a piece of freezer paper. Just something that you can draw around, cardboard, something like that. And then you've got a consistent shape. And I took it 
from the centre and went round. I don't think it needs to be symmetrical petal shape, but if you've got the general shape that you want, it gives it a nice effect. And you can, the, the beauty of, you know, using your fabric marker is that it's there as a guide. You don't have to stick to it. So if you feel that it goes out a bit too far on the one side, when you come to actually sew it, you can change it. Because once you've ironed it, the mark will disappear. It's gone, yeah. And so worked my way around, just filling in the petals in that space. And then when I sewed it, I started in the middle... And I sewed in a figure of eight shape. Oh, nice. Okay. Back to the middle and then went to the next one. Back to the middle, then to the next one. Back to the middle and then did the final one. So basically, you're sewing it all in one go. You start yeah. in the middle and you finish in the middle so you can tie all your ends in and take them to the back and pull them through. So that's a continuous line, if you like. So there's no stopping and starting and lots of ends to sew in. That's and, perfect. And then with the leaf um, shape, I did draw the vein in and I wanted to have it so that the, the, the main vein sort of went out so that when the next one came in, it would go sort of form a visual arch. Not They don't meet up, but gives you that effect. And so when I sewed that, again, free motion sewing, just take your time nice and steady up to the top, come back down, go to your vein, and you can draw all of this in. You don't have to do it freehand completely if you want to draw it to give you guidelines. So from the bottom up to the top, came back down to the one vein that way, down again, trying to stay on the on the vein, but it doesn't matter if you don't. If you come off and it got it gets two lines like that, that's okay too. It's a leaf shape in the end of the day and it's not meant to be accurate. And then came down and again went like that. And I did that on all of them. So it wasn't difficult. Mm. And if, you, if you're if you new to quilting, it's not... You could do it with your walking foot, but I did mine with my free motion foot. So my question now then is, if you wanted to do the runner behind you, yeah, could you then make mats? If you bought two kits, could yeah. you then make mats to Absolutely, match? to match. So you could yeah. have square ones, because I'm actually... I'll be honest, I'm surprised at how many people are saying, yes, we use mats. Yeah. Yes, you know, Claire's got a bugbear things on the table without. Yes. I think if you've got any kind of polished surface, then it's got to be a... Yeah, and I think, you know, you don't want to have white rings on your table, even if you've got like a rough oak table or a pine table. Yeah. You still don't want to have white marks where the heat's gone through, do you? And it's just, it's a great way, this way, to have your table looking yeah. lovely cover up any marks that you might have as well that's all one you see when i did the table runner <laughs> i put um a strip of the background fabric either side for the mm. middle block here and here but there's nothing to stop you if you like an oblong mat to just put a strip of fabric to the one side for the cutlery to go on oh nice you know you could have a wider strip on this side if you wanted to make mats and then once i got the three joined together i did the strip across the top and then I did the strip either side. And then the same with the border fabric. Across the top and bottom and then down the sides. And that was it done. And it, it, it comes together really quickly. Well, I think we've just seen this. And actually, um, someone in the chat, I've just come out of there, uh, was saying also, I think it was Chris, very manageable for a newbie. Yeah. Because it's not, I think it's 21 wide. Yeah. So that's going to go under the machine quite nicely. It's... 40 something, 42 I think, long, might be longer, might be a bit longer than that. But again, that again is not too much to, to try and manage yeah. under your machine, that's quite nice. So it's a nice project to have a go at free motion quilting on because it's not too big, you haven't got a great big quilt that you're trying to hold over your shoulder while you're getting it under the machine. And so then wondering yeah. why you've got a frozen shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> now your neck's so stiff when you're like this for the next two days. Yeah, Which is a great look, yeah. really great look. So it's a really nice block and of course you can use do all sorts of colourways with it.
I think it's just lovely, yeah. absolutely lovely. And of course, what you could do is you could bind in any of those colours if you've got some left. Yeah. So each of the mats could be bound in a different colour. It's entirely up to you. This is where you start to get... Yeah, start to play with the colours and yeah. see what works best yeah. for you. And if you wanted a large mat, of course, you could do the sashing in the white, couldn't you, and then yeah. bind it? make it bigger, make it a bigger square and, and carry on. You could make just one block, make it into a cushion. Lovely. Lovely as a cushion on your garden furniture, wouldn't it? These are all the things... These are all the things. Yeah. So that, Jane, is today's show. Yeah. Should we tell you what we've got tomorrow? What you've got to do tomorrow. Right. Oh. I've been up since ridiculous o'clock this morning, writing <laughs> it all up. Um, <clears throat> we have got um, a guide to bag handles. Oh, that's useful. So we start from the beginning where you just make a tube. Yeah. And we work our way up. And, on. and so it, it'll be a guide whereby you can dip into it and whatever type of handle you want to make, you've then got it there. Lovely. That's a nice idea. Um, so whether they're ones of fabric, ones that you make yourself, and then I've got some very whizzy whizzy handles. Oh, I saw those. They're rather exciting. They're very exciting that you can swap out and replace with other ones. It's nice to have an interchangeable handle because sometimes you want something that's a bit more yeah. or goes a different colour way. Or but, so these are ones that you can... So you can then have various different colours and then swap them out depending on how you want it to go. Nice. Yeah. Well, that'll be exciting then. Yeah. And then sample Lovely. sale on those. Yes, because we've got quite a few samples, haven't we? We are gathering. Some I can't bear to part with and some... It's tricky, isn't it? It's Maybe really tricky. it's hard, because yes. you do get attached to things. Yes. Well, I do. Which, which you know, yeah. then you get this fabric at the end of the day. But we made it, and we made it, and we love. So yeah. that's how that one goes. Um, Jane, is there anything else that we need? It's been a very short show today, but we've got lots and lots of things to pack. Um, yes, we've got a lot to catch up on, haven't we? We have, because you've been buying over the holidays and stuff. So which is thank lovely. You. Thank you for that. As ever, thank you for that, because it's the only reason that we can keep coming to work. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. Without you, we wouldn't be here. We're oh. very grateful for. Thank oh. you. Yes, thank you very much. Have a look at those bolt ends. Um, there are still some other bolt ends left, if you are, if there's anything yeah, of interest in there for you. lovely bits and pieces. Um, and well done to those of you that used your code that was in your Friday newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are a Natasha MacArthur Design member, then you'll find various codes there. Not just for you either. You know, we have those lovely double-sided quilted, pre-quilted fabrics that I did my... Um, I can show you, Jane. I'm going to throw stuff at you. But I did the quilted clan out of. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. Well, if you're this a design pre -quilted. member... pre-quilted. There's the back of my head. Yeah, that's pre-quilted fabric. I've, That's um, beautiful. I've got you a little discount for that for that place too. Nice. But again, I and if this. you are a design member, such a versatile little pouch this is. Lovely and spacious. Lovely, isn't it? Now, equally, you could you could quilt your own fabric. Yeah. So it's not. But again, sometimes you just want a little quick make, and if it's already <coughs> quilted, it just saves you so much time. Yeah, I can knock one of those out now in about fifteen minutes. But, you know, teacher's present. Yeah, perfect. But beautiful, yeah. isn't it? And if yeah. you make to sell, then these are really quick, nice makes to yeah to have. Yeah, and not too expensive to, to make either. So that is today's show, everybody. Um, we will see you tomorrow with my guide to bag making and all the handles in all the world <laughs> is how it feels. Yes. Including, including some chains because we've had the metal... Frame bags. Yes. And I finally found where the um, where the chains went that you can either clip into or do whatever. Yeah. And make those. Yeah, we're still finding stuff, aren't we? Which is ridiculous, isn't it? Crazy. Do you realise that we have been back here now for six months and yet still we're unpacking and finding things? Madness. It's Madness. just never ending. But there we go. Um, oh, hang on. A little message from Gemma. Uh, oh, Gemma's asking if we can actually measure the thermal M because we, we need to get a proper up stock update that. Um, oh, and 
Also, how many of you made the most of the complete rolls of interfacing? We did a big discount on those. It's not going to be for everyone. Like no. I, I know that. But if you are someone that bag makes... <clears throat> Yeah, having a full roll of this of the style vortex will yeah. be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And with a big chunky discount on that, the uh, medium weight interfacing. Ideal. The H six forty. If you are someone that sews on the regular and uses these things, when you see them and you see a big old chunky discount on it, it might be worth grabbing. So I leave that with you to ponder. They're at the top of the collection for today on the website Natasha makes. So do check it out. Take a little look, a little peruse. Um, but yeah, they're there. I think we've taken 25% off. Nice. And and it just comes as a big roll. And then you also know which one's which. Yes, because it's on the, the roll. Label on the top. Yeah. yeah. This is handy. Really handy. A little indulgent, possibly, but really handy. Because yeah. you're going to use it. Yeah, you'll, you will. Yeah. If you're a bag maker, the style bill fix is really it's one the one go to it? interfacings, isn't it? Really, yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Um, and it will come into us and we'll turn it around and send it straight back out to you. That's how that will go. So, thank you very much, everybody, for watching this morning. And we will see you tomorrow here, 10 o'clock, for my guide to bag handles. Lovely, okay. See you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye bye. bye. bye.